Hello, how are you? I'm Hector Perez from Dev School. Welcome to another graphical interface challenge to replicate a dribble design in .NET MAUI. This time I came across this design by Amir Hossein, in which he replicates a food delivery app. We have three screens that look, honestly, pretty good, but I've chosen to do this middle design, which I find quite attractive. It's the challenge we're going to take on this time. But before we continue, I invite you to visit the site at courses.devs.school, where you can find specialized training in .NET MAUI for creating cross-platform applications. With that said, let's get started. Let's start with this challenge. To do this, I've removed all the pre-created code or the default .NET MAUI template and assigned main page as the starting page. I haven't done anything else. This is because it's a graphical interface design, because it's a graphical interface challenge, so we're going to reuse this page called main page. Once we've done this, I'm going to go to this file called mainpage.saml and change the background color. We're going to reuse some of the colors that are created by default or that we have available in the initial template. If we go to the folder called resources, then to the folder styles, we see a file called colors.xaml and we can distinguish different colors that come pre-created by default. In my case, I'm interested in reusing these gray colors to use them as part of the app colors, which are these colors we see here. So we go back to the main page.xaml file and we're going to change the background color. We'll indicate that we want a background color equal to static resource and use the darkest or one of the darkest colors, which is gray 900. Let's start the application to see how the design we are working on looks. Once the application has been deployed, we can see the design in real time as we create it. The next step is to analyze the visual structure of the page we're going to recreate in order to obtain the different dimensions and locate different elements in the XAML code. Let's analyze how many rows we would need to use or create within a grid to accommodate all these elements. We will define a first row for this upper section, which would be the navigation bar. Then a second row for this title that says Double Smoky Burger. A third row that occupies all the content of this image and the nutritional information of the burger. And another row for the ingredient section and this descriptive text of the ingredients. We will use a last row for this button that says Add to Cart. So there would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 rows that we need to define as part of the XAML code. Let's go back to Visual Studio. We will create a new grid with its row definitions equal to and we will create different rows. The first one with 10% of space, the second another 10%, the third one 55%, the fourth row 15% and the last one 10% of space. Ok, with this we already have the grid or main container for our design. Once we have defined the container, let's go back to the design and, as part of this first row, we can see three elements, an icon, a text and a last icon. What we're going to do is create a grid that contains three columns. We go back to the XAML code and indicate that we want a new grid with its column definitions. We will indicate that all columns have the same width and we will also indicate that we want a margin equal to 20 to separate the content from the edges of the mobile device a little. Once we have done this, in order to use these icons that we see here on the screen, which we are actually going to use an icon font for the icons that I have previously created, I'm going to import the necessary fonts for this project. As part of the special folder called fonts, which is part of the project, I'm going to drag and drop these fonts. I have to stop the application to be able to add the fonts to the project. The font that we're going to use first is a font called Fontello, which is the icon font. We will also use the Roboto font in its light and regular version and a special font called Space Growth Sway in its bold, medium, regular, semi-volt, volt and regular versions. This is because we have different styles of the same font. 
it is one that you can see on the title screen. This font that has these somewhat strange edges and is used a lot in the application for this text is also used. So that is why we have to import several font styles. Since we have imported these files, let's go back to the MAUI program. In this case, and in order not to waste too much time on the definition of the fonts, I have previously created this code snippet in which I add each of the font names and give an alias to each of them. Basically, what I do is take the first section of the font name, put the name as an alias, and then each of the initial letters according to the font style. For example, for the bold version I put an uppercase B. I do this with each of the fonts, and with this we have added the fonts that we will use throughout the application, including a font called Fontello, which contains the set of icons that I have prepared beforehand. For the fonts, I went to this site called Fontello.com and selected these fonts that you can see on the screen. These three icons, the heart icon, the back arrow icon, and the clock icon, are the icons that we will use on our sample screen. Once we have done this, let's go back to mainpage.xaml and within the grid at the top of the navigation bar, we will start adding the first icon. We do this through an image control. We will indicate horizontal options equal to start, vertical options equal to center to center this image. Let's indicate that we want a source for our image because we're going to use an icon font and then within this source, we will indicate font image source. We will indicate that we want to use a font family equal to icons, which was the font we defined with an alias earlier. We indicate glyph equal to an ampersand symbol, a hash symbol, an X, uppercase E, 802, which is the code for this specific icon. Let's indicate a size equal to 20 units and a color equal to static resource and use the gray in its 200 variation. After saving the changes, we restart the execution of the application. Once this is done, we can see the first icon in the top left corner. The next step is to create the application title, which says foot detail. We return to our XAML code and as part of the grid after the image control, we create a label control. We position it in column number one with a font family equal to Roboto R, font size equal to 18 units, horizontal text alignment equal to center, text equal to foot detail, text color equal to static resource using the 200 version of the gray color and vertical options equal to center. We save the changes and can see the application title. Next, we create the last image control that contains the last icon. We duplicate the existing image control, but position it in column number two. Its horizontal options will be equal to end, as we want this icon to be on the right side. Its vertical options are fine being equal to center. We change the glyph so that instead of A02, it is equal to 800. We save the changes and with that, we have the last icon in the navigation bar. We have finished with this top part. The next step is to define the label control to display the text of the product that is currently being shown. I'm going to compress this grid and we'll continue working within the main grid. This time, we're going to create a label control and position the label in row number one. We'll assign a left margin of 20 a top to bottom margin of 10, comma 0, comma 0. The font family will be set to space B, which is the bold version of this font, font size equal to 25 units, text equal to double smoky burger, and a text color that is equal to static resource, version 100 of this gray. Close the tag. And we now have this title that we see here, which looks quite similar to the version on Dribble, which is this font that we can see. The next step is to define this section that displays the product information and the product image, which I find to be a rather interesting design. To achieve this goal, we're going to create a grid and we'll give a percentage to this gray section with this gray background that we see on the left side and another percentage for the image control. 
we'll return to Visual Studio and I'll start by defining a grid that we're going to place in row number 2. We'll indicate that we want two columns, one with 30% of space and the second with 70% of space. Next, we've already defined this grid that we can see here, but we need to start defining the sections for the information within the left part or this section of the left part that displays product information. And we'll do this by creating a set of grids that contain a couple of elements. We will indicate that we want to create another grid. We will define a set of row definitions and make all rows the same size. We will create a total of 5 rows, corresponding to each of the sections we see here. Within this grid, we will assign the grayish color that we see on the left side. To create this variation, we will return to the file called colors.saml, and we can see different variations of a gray color. We do not have a definition of a darker gray, meaning we go from the value 600 to 900. Therefore, we will duplicate one of the colors, call it gray 700, and the color will be equal to 30, 30, 30, which we see is a darker gray color. With this color, we save the changes and return to mainpage.xaml. We will create a round rectangle to have that curved shape that we can see in the design. We will place this round rectangle and indicate that it has a row span equal to 5, so that it uses all the available space of this grid. We will also indicate that we want a fill equal to static resource gray 700, which is the color we just defined in the colors file. We save the changes and now we can see that we have this section that is part of the round rectangle. The only thing left is to define the rounding in the corners. To do this, we will indicate corner radius equal to 0, 40, 0, 40 to only affect this pair of edges on the right. With this, we have achieved this section of the product information. The next step is to create this set of product information that we are displaying. After this round rectangle that serves only to show the background of this section, we will create another grid element with a margin equal to 10, 10, 0, 0 to have space to the left and up. We will indicate that we want to create a set of rows, specifically three rows, which correspond to this word rate, the rating, and this control that has a set of stars. Within this grid we have created, we will create a label control with a font family equal to space R, a font size equal to 12, the text that says rate, and the text color equal to static resource gray 200. I close this first tag and save the changes to see this in real time. We already have the word rate here. Let's create the other elements. I will duplicate this label control and indicate that I want to position it in row number 1. The font family will be space bold, the font size will be 14, and the text will be 4.8 out of 5 from 12,343 reviews. Finally, the color will be gray 100. I save the changes and we already have this second part that shows the product writing. The next step is to recreate the star control. I could put an image, but I prefer to show you a control that you could use. In my specific case, I will use a Syncfusion control that allows us to display this type of information. I will use the Syncfusion control because it is a company that is constantly updating its components. So I highly doubt that you will have problems when wanting to use it in a real application and with a view towards the future. I looked for some free options, but several packages are outdated and have been without updates for a long time. That's why I chose to use a Syncfusion control. To use this control, I will go to the Nougat package manager of the solution, search for the term Syncfusion MAUI inputs, and we have this control or this Nougat package which we're going to install as part of the solution. Once the package has been installed, I will close this tab. Go to MAUI program and as part of the builder, I will indicate that I want to use the configure Syncfusion core method, which imports the namespace automatically. We are now ready to use the control. Therefore, let's go to mainpage.xaml 
and as part of the namespaces I will define a new namespace called rating that is equal to CLR namespace syncfusion.maui.inputs. Let's indicate that we want to use the assembly equal to syncfusion.maui.inputs. With this namespace added, we can now use the control as part of the application. Let's go to the bottom where we have this grid definition that contains three rows and only contains two label controls at the moment. After the last label control, let's indicate rating colon SF rating, which is the control we are interested in. We will indicate that we want to position it in the last row, which is actually row 3, with the background color equal to transparent, to not have a background color, horizontal options equal to start to position it at the beginning, item size equal to 15, that is the size of each of the stars. We will also indicate that we want a precision equal to exact, which is useful for indicating how much we want to fill each of the stars in the control, and we will set an initial value of 4.6, for example, to show a part in yellow of the stars and the part that has not been filled as well. In addition to this, we also have to fill in the information of the rating settings. It is through the use of rating color SF rating. There is a property called rating settings to configure the outline, the color of the stars, etc. In our case, we will use the rating settings element with some properties such as, for example, rated fill, which is the fill color of the stars. Let's use the color FFC71F for the fill and the rated stroke, which is the outline of the stars. I have noticed that a default color is used, so I will use the same color as the star fill to not have any visual change of the star. We will also indicate that we want to use the property on rated fill with a gray color and also a rated stroke equal to gray, also to not have any visual discrepancy. With these changes, I will save the XAML file and start the application again to see how this looks. With this implementation, we can now see the start control that shows the information satisfactorily. The next step is to create each of the sections of the additional information for this specific product. To do this, I will compress the first grid, create a second grid, which I will position in row number one. I will create or specify a margin that is equal to 10, 10, 0, 0. Also row definitions equal to two rows. I will create two rows of the same size, also a row spacing equal to five units. This is to separate each of the text of each of the sections and not to have them so close together. Inside this grid, I will create a first label control with its font family equal to space R, font size equal to 12 units, a text that is equal to delivery time, also a text color that is equal to static resource, gray 200, and finally, its vertical options equal to end. This is to push the label that says delivery time down and not to have it too far apart from the time. Once this is done, I will proceed to create a horizontal stack layout, which I will position in row number one, and also assign a spacing equal to five. This horizontal stack layout is because we have here a first icon that shows a clock followed by the text of 20 minutes. That's why we are creating a horizontal stack layout as part of this grid. Inside, we can copy the content or rather this image control that we had used previously to not have to write everything again. So I paste the content of the image control and indicate that I want to position this image control in the first column or rather we don't have columns here because we are inside a horizontal stack layout. Let's indicate that we want its horizontal options equal to end and vertical options equal to start. As part of this font image source, we use the same icon font. The glyph will be equal to 801, the size will be equal to 20, and it will be the same color. So let's save these changes, and we can now see the first icon that shows the time information. After the horizontal stack layout, or rather inside the horizontal stack layout, but after the image control, I will proceed to copy one of these label controls that already contains all the information or the properties set. I will indicate that the font family will be equal to space B, because it is a slightly darker font. 
the font size will be equal to 15, the text will be equal to 20 minutes, the text color will be equal to gray 100 and vertical options will be equal to start. With these changes we saved the application and we already have this first section that shows the delivery time. The next part is easier because we already have this section defined, so all we have to do is duplicate one of the grids. So I will duplicate this grid that is after the first grid, I will paste the grid and make some modifications, such as removing the horizontal stack layout and replacing it with the label that is inside. With this, then we will indicate that we want the grid in row number 2, the same margin, the same row definitions, same row spacing, the first label control will be exactly the same, or well, we will only change the text to calories, but the other properties remain the same. With this last label, we will indicate that the font family is equal to SB, also, we will position this label in row number 1, the text will be equal to 1200 calories. Let's save the changes to see how this looks and notice how we already have this second section. Once again, let's duplicate this grid and only make some minor changes, such as, for example, we want to position this grid in row number 3. We will only change the text. The first text will be equal to branch and the second text will be equal to creek road. The properties are the same, so we already have this fourth section that we see on screen. Let's create the last information section by duplicating the grid and changing only the text again. The first text by price and the second text by a value of 10. Let's save the changes, in fact you have to change the value of the row to 4. With this we have completed this first part of the first section on the left that shows the product information we are viewing. The next step is to create the image on the right side. We will place this image within the grid we have defined with two columns, one with 0.3 star and the second with 70% space. After this grid, we will create the image control, which we will place in column number 1, with an aspect equal to fill, and a source equal to burger.png. We have not imported this image yet, so I will stop the execution of the application and drag the image into the folder called images. Once we have added this image, we will start the execution of the application to see how it looks so far. With the image control we have added, we now have this burger image that looks pretty good. In any case, if you want this image to be positioned more to the right, as is the case with the design we can see on Dribble, what we could do is push this grid containing both columns a little more to the right. So, we could add a margin equal to 0 on the left, 0 on the top, minus 50 on the right, and finally a value of 0. If we save the changes, we can see that we have successfully pushed this image to the right. Once we have finished this section of the information, we will move on to the ingredient section. To do this, after this grid that defines the 0.3 and 0.7 columns, we will create another grid which we will place in row number 3, with a margin equal to 20, 10, 0, 0. Its row definitions will be equal to 30% for the first row and 70% for the second row. This is because we will use the first row for this section or this text that says ingredients and the second for the text of the ingredients. Within the grid, we will create a label control with a font family equal to space M, font size equal to 18, a text that is equal to ingredients, a text color that is equal to static resource gray 100 and its vertical text alignment equal to center. We save the changes and can see the title that says ingredients. This is because I forgot to add the dot for the second row. If we save the changes, you can now see the title correctly. The next step is to create the label control to display the information of the ingredients. We will position this label control in row number 1 with a font family equal to Roboto in its light version and specify a line height equal to 1.3 to provide greater separation between each ingredient line and avoiding them being too close together. 
The following property will be the same. Copy and paste the text here since it is the text from the dribble design. Also, modify its text color property to be equal to static resource gray in its 200 version. And finally, the vertical text alignment property to be equal to center. Save the changes and now you can see that we have this text section correctly set up. Here I missed a no, so the correct font didn't load. With this change, we have the ingredient section displayed satisfactorily. The last thing we will do is create this button that we see at the bottom. To do this, after the grid we have defined, we will create a button control that we will place in row number 4 with a margin equal to 15 units on the sides and 0 units on the top and bottom. We also specify a background color equal to FFC71F, a corner radius equal to 30 units, font attributes equal to bold, font family equal to Roboto R, that is the regular version of the Roboto font, a font size equal to 18 units, a height request equal to 50 units, text that says add to cart, and finally a text color equal to black. After saving the changes and returning to the emulator, we can now see this beautiful button positioned at the very bottom. With this, we conclude the dribble design. If we place the design and application or the page we have developed with code side by side, we see that both designs resemble each other. I hope this video is helpful for you designs, that you find inspiration with them, and if you liked the video, I invite you to like the video, subscribe, share it, and click on the notification bell so you know when I launch a new graphical interface challenge or content related to .NET in general. See you in the next video.